are back from an impromptu holiday in Spain. I had a training camp in Castel de Fels. Uh, saw some, some great fights, some top players there. Probably some Olympic final previews going on. It was um, a fabulous camp. Hot, hot. A little different than here in Belgium. It was a pretty cool day today. I wouldn't call it summer, but uh, welcome everybody to our summer edition on uh, the Complete Judoka, our audio blog. I've forgotten the number, but we'll carry on anyways. Um, trolling through the judo forum as I do, and it seems that people just can't let go of the argument of the leg grabs and the rule changes. So uh, I'd like to welcome Neil. He's got some more thoughts on that. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing fine. Um, like you say, we had some, uh, some really interesting confrontations uh, in Casta de Fels and um, some, like you say, previews, I think, of World Finals and Olympic Finals. Um, uh, a very interesting week. It was. It was. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I mean, people like, like my favorite, my, I'm a big fan of Dacos and uh, seeing her fight and, and really um, looking at it that she wasn't just to see her in her element, but not competition element, more randori than it was competition. So it was nice to see that kind of training side of it all. It was also, I think, interesting to see that there were a lot of Vipons as well, you know. and uh, Big and, ones. Yeah, massive Vipons, uh, uh, which I think is a result of the uh, new rule changes, which, of course, we're going to uh, come back to now. And, nice um, segue, Neil. That well, nice it's segue. a nice way in, but, you know, uh, just to reflect that it, it, it is affecting it. You know, it's been two years in now. We've seen some real development uh, over the last two years. And, uh, of course, I think that uh, the IJF, um, you know, the Referees Commission, have realised that the, you know, the speed in which they changed all the rules... Um, you know, there was going to be some, you know, some very grey areas that needed attending and looking at. And I think that that's what's happening. They are looking at them very carefully. So, OK, um, that, that's pretty well your argument now, as of late, are these grey areas that they're getting too organic. And even, like you were saying, that um, some of the athletes are coming on. Pesha from Austria, under 60s, noted to you this week in, in Castel de Fels. Well, yeah, I mean, he, um, he said that um, he, the, the rule changes, obviously, what's going to happen, uh, the, the athletes are going to adapt very, very quickly. I mean, if you have a look at Pesha... This is, a, this is an athlete's point of view. He's this is an athlete's it. point of view, you know, and, um, you know, uh, Pesha is a leg grabber and he's Sumagesh is his favourite technique, you know, everything he does is uh, kind of below the pelt. And, um, but he said, you know... Figuratively that, speaking. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and he said that... Uh, you, the, the players will adapt. They will absolutely adapt. Already he, have adapted. And they have adapted, of course. And his worry is, is um, you know, will the referees uh, stay up with the uh, pace of the evolution, you know, with, with the uh, development that the, the fighters are going to put to these uh, new rules. Which you've and, commented on before. Yeah, right? which I've commented on. And, you know, and obviously, you know, the referees realise that, you know. So, therefore... You know, the uh, Referees Commission and the Coaches Commission are coming together to try and alleviate this and trying to bring it closer together. To make it more black and white or to... Yeah, I, I think that's, that's the problem, is that we've got to make it more black and white. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, it brings us to this situation about uh, leg grabbing and, you know, uh, is it affecting, you know, I mean, obviously the blog that we're talking about, uh, the recent kind of uh, speculation is... Has the leg grabbing, you know, had an effect on the uh, new forms of fighting sports that are coming in, like MMA and the well, UFC has it, and has things like that? Has it been like a marketing disaster? And that's, that's what we're talking about. Has, have the new changes been detrimental to judo? That, that's the main argument here. They've, you've got one camp saying, oh, it's changed judo forever. It's terrible. You know, why can't, we, why can't the referees just leave us alone and let us fight? And then there's the other camp maybe a bit more traditional, saying, well, no, we've got to keep judo as it is and, and, and keep it separate from MMA and, and BJJ and, and the UFC kind of entertainment section. From my talks, you know, with the IJF and with uh, Mr. Vizé, um, what's, uh, w what I've taken from it is that if we hadn't cha have changed, if we hadn't have changed the rules, I think we would have been struggling to keep our sport in the Olympic Games. This was, this was a comment batted around, wasn't it, that if things didn't change, 
It, it was, and you know, it, but judo was in peril. It was in, it, it was in peril standing. because if yeah. you have a look at how it's developed um, since the you know breakdown of the Soviet Union in 1990. All these, um, you know, different communist states and the um, uh, different wrestling um, traditions that come from these um, uh, co uh, communist countries um, have so come to the front. Yeah, they, and they've developed, you know, they've been, been able to develop, you know, and, uh, you know, whereas it was under one umbrella, now, you know, it's split. And so, of course, a lot of these different wrestling traditions help to develop. Um, you know, uh, judo in a different manner. And the rules allowed it to happen. And this is, you know, coming back to my new book, which is Judo Evolution, and how rules have um, altered the development of, of judo, we allowed it to happen. What so I find, if I can interject, one, one thing I find interesting, I'm talking about this marketing and, and being scared that um, MMA is going to swallow up judo and that. The... Any BJJ or, or MMA influence has only been in the standing, in the tachiwaza. It hasn't been in the neiwaza, which for BJJ and MMA is 80, 90, 95% is yeah, neiwaza. You know, this is, this is a prime example. If you have a look at jiu-jitsu and, um, you know, the level of the neiwaza in jiu-jitsu has just gone uh, through the roof. It's I mean, it's, it's rocketed. It's, it's, it's been immense. But it's a f different form of neiwaza. Um, and the rules, so? well, the, the, the rules dictate a different form of neiwaza for the simple reason that in uh, jiu-jitsu, for example, uh, it's all about um, uh, submission. submission and getting submission holds. And, and so the neiwaza is allowed to, to happen for a lot they get, longer. They get a longer time period in Much order longer. to initiate and and implement their technique. Yes, and so, you know, the, 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 the Neiwaza overall, you know, groundwork uh, has become very, very strong. But if you, uh, if you put judo rules to it, and, um, you know, the, the, the problem is, it's, with judo, it's gone the other way, you know, in as that uh, we haven't been allowed to have long enough in Neiwaza, from Tachiwaza to Neiwaza, um, you know, you've, you've had a five-second window so what's, what's um, to, to initiate Neiwaza, and it's just not long enough. What's the ramifications of that? Well, then? the ramifications are that because we haven't had long enough to develop uh, Neiwaza or to use Neiwaza in a competition situation, so therefore the development of Neiwaza in clubs has fallen by the wayside. So you don't have the Adams, the Gibers, the... Um Yaskovich's anymore. No, really. I mean, you know, if you have a look back into the 80s and the 90s, what happened was we had a, a much larger and bigger window uh, in order to initiate good Newaza uh, transition and... Uh, and good, fights were won. And in fights were won and uh, they were allowed to carry on. You have a look at my, um, you know, my world final and it was allowed, you know, to, it was progressive and they allowed it to carry on. Maybe and, that's why it's gone up to mythical standards. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, but that you know, that's what happens, isn't it? Maybe it's the last it? great fight that was won by Neil or something. Well, you know, but, but, you know, in order to get that back, what we need is that window. And we've been promised that window and it's happening... Uh, at, by who? Who's promised Well, it's been promised uh, by the um, IJF and the International Referees Commission that we will have um, more time... To, to follow down into Newaza. But, you know, saying that, that's easier said, but, but what happens is now we haven't got the Newaza specialists. So what happens is now it's a catch-22 situation. Starting over. Starting over again. So we need that window. They mustn't panic. We're going to get it back. If we've got a longer window uh, of, uh, of transition and we're able to follow through into Newaza and develop the Newaza situation then we will practice it within the clubs, we'll develop our youngsters and we'll bring back the Newaza. And well, then we'll have a much more balanced uh, game. Uh, game. Well, like, uh, classic example from what I can, off the top of my head, Zantaraya, minus 60s, Tokyo World Championships. Yeah. I just laid down like a baby. No when, defense. When um, absolutely can pluck an Osota Gary out of midair without having any foothold on the mat. And he has a couple of good attacks as well. He does score in Newaza as well. He, he scores, uh, you know, when he goes in and he, he's on so top. He's got he an offensive it. Newaza, but yeah. no defense. But no defense at all. Why is and, that? Well, I think just because he's never practiced it. I mean, he, uh, uh, and then you look at Georgia. I mean, prime example there, um, you know, uh, the Georgians never 
practiced Newaza. So, you know, they realize that the Georgians and, and also the, um, um, the Ukraines and, and the Azerbaijanis, you know, they realize that they need uh, Newaza, specific Newaza, especially with the rules changing. And, uh, you know, so I've been asked to go over and do certain things there. Um, you know, you have a look at um, the situation. Um, Seisenbacher, for example, has been appointed a Georgian national coach. And uh, he was an absolutely amazed when he went there that they just didn't do Newaza. So anyone who's got fairly decent Newaza skills has got a job. <laughs> so, well, yeah. <laughs> in I, the upcoming years. Absolutely. And I think that the, 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 the quicker we get the balance right a, again, um, you know, then the better. You know, for judo, for judo development, I think that that is absolutely imperative. Well, look at, I, I was watching in Castel de Fels, Ilia, Ilias Iliadis. That's a mouthful, but there you are. Um, the way he warms up, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the class even starts, just rolling around. He just picks somebody out. He's friends with everybody, isn't he? He's, he's a lovely chap. Yeah, but I, and pulls someone out just and roll around, jacket or no jacket. Well, yet again, it's just because of the wrestling tradition in Georgia. You know, it's what he does and what he's always done. And, uh, you know, and then you get the uh, jiu-jitsu guys now. And, uh, you know, it, it's all about rolling, getting them down. And, you know, to turn it the other way around, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, MMA um, seminars that I get and the jiu-jitsu ones that I get now I mean they're not getting me in there for the newaza, they're getting me in there for, for the standing and, and for the classical stand up um, techniques and, that, transition. That, and transitions not necessarily leg picks, it's throwing people to well them. I mean this is the thing isn't it it's not the leg picks that people want to see in these mixed martial arts uh, 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 competitions they want to see the big throws and it's always the big throws that they comment about you know the judo side of it what they want to see are the big throws. The actually smaller ones, the, the, the takedowns and things like that, are all about getting the transition. And, uh, you know, balance so again, yeah, balance, direction and transition from standing down to ground. And the MMA guys will be the, the first ones to kind of point out that, that you know, that, that the actual transition, if you see the cage fighters as well, the actual transition from standing to ground is sometimes the, is that, that's the part that, that is missing. Well, and that's what I've heard banded around at these different competitions, like different um, cage fights that we've, we've gone to, is that judo is the secret weapon. Well, yeah, I think certainly from a, a throwing perspective, I think that that's probably where they need to get their balance. You know, I think that from a, a, a jiu-jitsu uh, perspective, I think they realize some of the top jiu-jitsu guys now know that their uh, newaza skills are incredible. Again, if you change the, you know, to, to, to judo rules, then, you know, they'd have a different kind of a, a, a need and a different requirement, you know, so they'd have to change their game as well. It doesn't mean that they're not strong in newaza. They are. But from uh, standing and their tachiwaza, they realize that the tachiwaza, their standing work, isn't, uh, isn't up to scratch. And so there's a lot of the jiu-jitsu boys, a lot of the MMA guys that are coming into judo to learn stand-up judo. So let's go back to the original argument. Is judo going to get swallowed up by UFC and BJJ and the Muay Thai and the striking? No, I, I think what you've got to realize is that there's always going to be different martial arts and different fighting forms that are going to come through and, and create uh, extra interest. People Should are going to become elite. Um, we, well, we, we are really, and I think we've got to look after our own. Judo is judo, and I think that uh, what people have got to understand, um, people say, well, we, you know, the new rules were just thrust upon us. They took away, you know, uh, leg grabs. They didn't take away leg grabs. Leg grabs are still... Uh, yeah, leg are, leg, they're not banned. No, they're it's, not banned. They're still it's allowed. <laughs> it's just when you use them. And I think what, what they've done, uh, they've had to do for the sake of Olympic judo. And I think, you know, to uh, save ourselves and to stop us becoming just uh, another fighting art, I think that what we've got to do to keep judo as judo, uh, I think what they've done is, is correct. I think that what we've, uh, what we've got to remember is that um, we are um, a, an elite Olympic sport and to keep it Olympic-based, uh, um, you know, that is one of the main reasons that the IJF had to introduce uh, immediate changes. I think what maybe the argument that's found on the on judo forum, it's it's not so much 
I, I think what, the, what I read, anyways, it's an argument of apples and oranges. Where there's Olympic judo, and then there's entertainment judo or entertainment combative sports. So, you know, I think if we always keep keep the line definite between Olympic judo, like I mean, in the states, they've started this freestyle judo organization and things like that. Okay, so that's a derivative of judo, but it doesn't take away. It, it just like judo was a derivative of jujitsu. Kano took gentle way, the gentler form of jujitsu. The origins of judo itself and then it is developed. a byproduct. And then it developed. And I see in certain forums, you know, some people are saying, oh, we don't really agree with the, you know, the leg grabs. You know, where, I mean, there's a lot of top judo guys that were only scoring from leg Montero. grabs. And in Montero, uh, I mean, she was uh, under 57 kilos, and number two in the world. Everybody thought it was the end. Finished. And she now she done. has a fantastic Cianaghi. She's back to number two in the world. And, you know, so she's adapted. And I think that for the development of our youngsters, it's imperative that, that, that we, you know, teach them good stand-up judo. We can show them the uh, other forms and the other bits of the fighting and, uh, you know, but we have to get the balance. It's about balance. And I think that as far as the newaza is concerned and how we develop the newaza, it's all about getting it balanced uh, so that we can uh, have a window there uh, for them to be able to do newaza, then uh, on the other side of that, what we can do is we can start teaching our youngsters uh, the transition from standing to ground. We can teach them good newaza and good uh, complete newaza. You know, it turns into hold downs, turns into obviously eventually arm lock strangles and things like that. And uh, we can improve uh, the game as a whole. Fantastic. Well, I think that's a good point to uh, to finish on that rules dictate the development so we've got to really be um, diligent i think on, so on yeah keeping, I, I, and i keeping think judo judo i think the other the, the other big thing is that we we've got to remember that 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 we uh, we are judo uh, we are um, uh, judo was developed at the turn of the century, like you say. It's derived, an art and it derived sport. from jiu-jitsu. It went its own way and developed into a, a stand-up fighting sport. You know that obviously we've got Nawaza as well, but you know, and you know, it's going to go that way as, uh, again. If we could teach our kids how to stand up, do some classical stand-up judo, it can only be good for the sport. Mm -hmm.